Hello, Matt. Hello. I am so thrilled and so excited that you are here. I just know this is going to be a really good conversation because I have been following you on social media for a while and I am so thrilled, excited, and just so ready to really get into this conversation with you today. So I guess we should start off by you introducing yourself and let it, you know, letting us know who you are and what you do. Well, first, I am excited to be here with you because I'm going to brag about you a little bit. Um, you guys, she got a hold of me a little bit ago and <laughs> yeah, and I just went over to her you know, channel and started watching things. Uh, and I was really impressed. Right. And I wrote you a note saying, yeah, I'd be happy to go on because I just love the way that you're so authentic, I think is probably the word I used. Uh, and so oh, thanks, I'm Matt. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. So uh, who am I? Oh, I'm Matt Harris. Uh, I'm a pearl jewelry designer, pearl expert, pearl historian. Uh, I've designed pearls for some fun celebrities like Britney Spears and Deborah Messing and uh, Victoria's Secret models, um, you know, national news anchors. I'm sending some out just today, as a matter of fact, to somebody that is a star on a very big hit show. And I can't tell you yet, but um, I'm very excited about that. Ooh, how exciting. Yeah, you'll see her post. I'm going to wait for her to post. Um, but you know what I really like the best is teaching people about pearls so that they can feel comfortable with pearls so they can you know participate in pearl fashion. Uh, and a lot of people just want to understand like what they have in their jewelry box that grandma gave them. And so uh, there's a lot to learn about pearls. One thing I love about them is that you can never know everything about them. Uh, but they have a story that's untold. And I kind of feel like one of my roles is to help tell tell the story. And I like yeah. other jewelry too. You know, we're going to talk on a different podcast about um, resale, uh, but pearls are my love, my specialty. Yes. You know, and uh, when I watch your videos, you can just tell that you are someone who truly, uh, I mean, yes, you're an expert, but there's something about the energy of a master. And that's really what I get from your videos. Like you have mastered pearl knowledge, pearl wisdom, <laughs> pearl everything. So I know a lot of people listening and watching, they have a passion for pearls too, just like you do. Oh. And, and one of the things I think is most challenging for a lot of us who love pearls, but don't have a, a lot of knowledge about pearls is, you know, really trying to learn all the different types and what, what, what is real, what is not. So let's start there. Like if someone is just getting into this or trying to learn what would you tell them or where would you suggest that they start? The biggest question I get is, uh, say in the retail environment, if somebody's looking at pearls, uh, you, you see it online too, is are these pearls real or fake? And I was up at 2 a.m. last night watching this girl in China do like a live pearl show. And she's really good. She'll like make stuff while um, people are watching. And she has like 800,000 followers. And people were asking her if they're real pearls. And she kept having to say, yes, they're real natural pearls, which is technically incorrect. So um, I can lay it out for you guys. It's pretty easy. So when people say real pearls, I think of it as is it a pearl that came from a mollusk as opposed to, say, plastic or a bead, right? Okay. And so within, yes, a real pearl, a pearl that comes from a mollusk. And I say mollusk because they actually don't come just from oysters. They come from oysters and other mollusks in the family of mollusks. So an oyster is a type of mollusk. And then there's other mollusks that create pearls. So a pearl comes from a mollusk, right? And there's two different types of those pearls. One of them is called a natural pearl. So when you use the word natural in the pearl industry, that is a pearl that has no assistance from mankind whatsoever. So that's the old romantic um, idea of somebody swimming down in the ocean and, you know, grabbing an oyster and pulling it up and opening it up and whoa, it's a pearl. So that is what a natural pearl is. It's just nature created it and it was just completely haphazard. And when you think of, um, you know, an irritant, everybody talks about, you know, um, uh, irritants and there's a lot of metaphors to life like you know you're a pearl because you've created nature and beauty around your irritant um, that's what that's talking about so there is a natural pearl now another type of real pearl is a culture pearl and a culture pearl is when a human takes the irritant and places it in the mollusk 
and then the mollusk creates the nacre around that irritant and that's called a culture pearl so you have natural pearls okay no human intervention uh culture pearls humans help uh, and then you've got the fake pearls, which are people call them faux pearls to be fancy, um, you know, <laughs> yes. which are plastic or, or whatever. Yes, so and I've, that I've, makes sense. yes, and it does. And I've also heard people say um, synthetic pearls and lab grown pearls. Is that fake? Uh, you have. Obviously. That is interesting. Uh, it, I think that the word lab grown, if you're hearing that, may have stemmed from the lab grown diamond use of the word mm -hmm. lab, uh, because now there's lab grown diamonds, which is a really interesting subject. And as you know, those are technically diamonds, but they're created in a machine, mm -hmm. uh, but they have the same chemical structure. Uh, they're, they're diamonds, but they just don't come from millions of years underneath the earth. Um, they don't really in the industry say lab grown pearls. Um, I, I don't hear that, um, but uh, there is a type of pearl. Boy, I don't want to get too technical on you guys, but uh, if you've ever heard the word Edison pearl, and I know some of your viewers probably have, Edison pearls are pearls that have been created in the last well, like 15, 20 years, where instead of taking that mollusk uh, in fresh water in China, which is where well, I've got some in front of me, like these pearls come from. These are just some cool, funky gray pearls. So Ooh. instead of, I can't come too focused, but whatever. Um, these used to be made by taking a piece of tissue from a mollusk. So they literally slice a little tiny rectangular piece of what they call mantle tissue. It's like a gooey skin stuff. And they'll stick it next to the bead that they put inside the mollusk. And that mantle tissue starts, I'm sorry, they don't step back. They don't have a bead. They just stick the mantle tissue into the mollusk. That's the irritant, and then the pearl is created around that mantle tissue. And so for years, Chinese have been creating freshwater pearls, is what they call them, mm -hmm. using that okay. method. Now, this is getting to your question about lab. So in the last 15 years or so, a new pearl has been created that uses a bead like the rest of the world. So if you get pearls from uh, Japan or Tahiti or Australia or Philippines, those are all what's called bead nucleated. They put a bead in and it creates the pearl. In China for the, all these years, they've just been using mantle instead of a bead. Lately, however, though, they've been using a bead and they're calling these Edison pearls. And the reason they call them Edison pearls, people say, is that Edison famously said that there's two things he can't make in his lab. One is a diamond and another is a pearl. Well, these pearls, instead of being out in the rice paddy field or in a lake, uh, or a stream in China are uh, in a controlled environment where they can actually manipulate like the minerality of the water and give the um, mollusks certain nutrients. So in a way, it's kind of grown in a lab, but it still comes from a living organism, a mollusk. I hope I didn't confuse you guys. <laughs> no, that, actually, that explains a lot because, you know, people, I think they just kind of throw out random terms, not really mm -hmm. understanding either you know, what they're saying or what they're describing, or maybe because something sounds trendy, right? You know, at the moment they'll say, oh, this is lab grown. Maybe they're trying to. <laughs> this is the trendy word in pearls. But here's the thing about Edison pearls. Now, traditionally Chinese freshwater pearls have been, uh, they produce, by the way, like 98% of the pearls in the world are Chinese freshwater pearls. Um, but they've always been like kind of lackluster and okay and inexpensive, but because they're putting them in this control envir environment and they're using a bead nucleated um, or, and that they're bead nucleated, they're coming out really beautiful uh, and round. Uh, you weren't getting perfectly round pearls before in freshwater pearls. And the nacre thickness is fantastic and they're very lustrous. I mean, incredibly lustrous. Um, I have, it's really hard to see, but here is a whole bunch as a matter of fact uh, these are all edison pearls this is a new camera and i haven't really figured out how to focus with these live videos yet that's um, okay you many. can um are those the ones that you were showing on instagram the other day i don't know maybe <laughs> <laughs> so anyways edison pearls are, are gorgeous and they're trendy because they're beautiful they really are and in the pearl world 
in order to get really, really nice pearls in the past, you'd have to buy a Koya from Japan or South Seas, um, whereas now you can get them for a fraction of the price and they look really, really nice. And that's kind of the, uh, the new buzz. So is there a way then just by looking at pearls that is like someone like me who doesn't have a lot of knowledge, is there a way maybe if I were to look, are there things really that I'd be able to pick up on and say, oh, okay, this is, this is a real pearl or this is what, a cultured pearl? Like, is there a way to recognize it just by, by the eye? Yeah, so remember, I mean, culture pearls are real pearls. Oh, yeah, um, they're real pearls, that's But right. they're not natural pearls. There is okay. no way with your eye that you can tell uh, if a pearl is a natural pearl. Okay. Now, keep in mind, natural pearls, they don't make them anymore. All pearls, almost all pearls are farmed and cultured these days. Now, the exception is Bahrain, and Bahrain is fantastic. Uh, they, as a matter of fact, the Gulf region before oil uh, around 1900, that was their number one export was was pearls. Uh, and so they're kind of coming back now and the government's very behind pushing these natural pearls and they've got divers out there diving down. It's really cool. Um, but it's the tiniest, 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 tiniest part of the market that um, the chances of you coming across a natural pearl are, are kind of rare actually. Uh, so okay. it, could you tell with your eye? No, uh, you would have to send it to get x-rayed uh, and oh. to a lab like the GIA or another lab. Um, now, to tell the difference between, say, a pearl from a different region, say, um, Tahiti versus uh, South Seas versus China versus Japan. It takes a little bit of experience, but there's hints, you know, like Tahitians, for example, you guys probably all heard Tahitian pearls are like this. It's the one I'm wearing. Uh, they tend to be light gray to black. Uh, yes. And, and they have a little gray. iridescent finish to them, don't they? They can't, the, the beautiful ones have like a, yeah, the overtones um, of, of pinks and greens and things like that. So you can just kind of tell eventually um, when you get experience uh, easily between say Tahitian pearls and um, maybe Akoya, which are smaller and very, very lustrous. Size is a big giveaway as well. So Akoyas tend to be small. South Seas white pearls tend to be very big. As a matter of fact, um, it's the largest oyster in the world that produces a pearl. But over time, you kind of you, you get a you get a sense of it. And if it's really funky, weird shaped pearl, it's probably Chinese freshwater pearl. The hard thing is these Edison pearls determining those between um, a Akoya and an Edison, and sometimes a South Seas. A lot of practice. Now I have a video video on YouTube though. If, as far as telling if your pearls are real, it's called I think five ways to tell if your pearls are real or fake. So mm -hmm. if, if you have pearls now and you just want to tell if they're real pearls. Go there and I'll give you five tricks and I'll give you a spoiler. The number one really is because you guys have probably heard it. You put it in your mouth and <laughs> if it's, yes, if it's gritty on your bottom of your tooth. Mm -hmm. like that, it's a real pearl. Uh, mm -hmm. And if it's not gritty, then it's probably a fake pearl. All right. So now that we know a little bit about how to tell if they're real and we can't obviously figure it out just by looking at it, I want to talk about kind of the popularity of pearls because I watched one of your videos where you were talking about um, Prince Charles with the coronation and he had pearls or something. Was it in his crown? I can't remember, but right, it was so fascinating to me. And I'm like, wow, like most people don't even think about, you know, how um, popular and I guess how far back uh, pearls were used. So let's talk a little bit about that. I'm going to try to fix my blurriness, though, because I think I completely screwed up the camera by holding pearls around. Do I look blurry to you? <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. We're going to hold pearls next to my face and see if we can get it focused. A little bit better. Hello. Yeah. Huh. I may have to be a little bit blurry for the rest of this. Yeah. Or. Um, so much for using a new camera. Yeah. Or different. sometimes if you hide the background, like, can you blur your background and then. Um, or like change your background, like and then go back. Oh, there it is. There it is. There we go. <laughs> ah, all right, I'm back. So, uh, all right, way way better. Although I probably look better blurry actually. Uh, so where where were we? <laughs> uh, we were talking about uh, the popularity of pearls and um, historically, like how far how far. Oh, and you mentioned back. King King Charles, for example. Yes, yes, uh, King Charles. 
here's an interesting thing that I'll bet you you guys don't know. Uh, pearls date back as jewelry further, way further than diamonds, uh, further than uh, emeralds, further than sapphires, uh, mm. and arguably maybe even further than rubies. So uh, the first example of pearl jewelry um, found was about 4000 BC. Now, uh, at the time, and, and, and then up through history, really until the last 150 years, pearls have always been the most important and influential uh, and most expensive gem in the world. As a matter of fact, there's parts in time in history where it was illegal to own a pearl unless you were of certain status. Uh, during Julius Caesar's time, uh, you had to be at the highest level of society and wealth in order to wear a pearl. Uh, and if you were a woman, you couldn't wear a pearl unless you were married to somebody that was. Uh, and uh, Caesar himself was as, actually a, a big pearl collector. So, uh, yeah, the history is, is crazy. And uh, I was just in the Houston Museum uh, this weekend. And uh, those of you that follow me on Instagram uh, and YouTube, you'll start seeing some videos come about this. So I tested this notion. Are pearls the most inter interesting? Not really interesting because you can't prove that via history paintings, but you can prove that they are uh, and were a big part of culture and they were considered a sign of not only wealth, but, you know, love, virginity, so many other things. To what extent do you find pearls in old paintings? And it's fascinating how many paintings that if you guys are going in museums, look for this next time. You see the painting. But take a look and see if somebody's wearing pearls and they'll never tell you about it in the description next to the painting. But in so many cases, they are because throughout history, they've been that important. Uh, like, again, in, in Caesar's time, hugely important. Um, Cleopatra, there's a famous story about her making a bet with Mark Anthony um, to see who could host the most expensive banquet ever in the history of the world. And he said, you're on. And she took a pearl that she bought for 11 million sestresses, which that's probably equivalent to 12, 15 million bucks now. Uh, most expensive pearl that there was in the world, supposedly. And she said, crush it to one of her servants. And they crushed it and put it in a cup of wine. And she drank it and thus had the most expensive uh, banquet in history. It's not true, but it's a great story. Um, but throughout history, yeah, there's 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 a lot of uh, evidence about pearls being such an incredible part of, of governments of um, queens and kings. I mean, they all it's not just the queens, uh, kings like in my video, we talk about King Charles first, second and third, all wearing pearls. Uh, and in King Charles, what you're alluding to is the imperial crown uh, that he wore during um, his coronation uh, has four pearls kind of dangling from the top. Um, two of them can be traced back to uh, the 1400s and Pope Clement, uh, and they've been handed down through Elizabeth I. They're called Queen Elizabeth's Pearls. So it, it's really crazy and deep how it goes into, um, they cross every segment of European history uh, and other parts of the history of the world too. You've heard of Pocahontas, right? Of course. Disney? Of course. Yes. Her dad wears wore pearls. Yeah, I mean, they're, now they were in a whole different part of the world. I mean, so there's different areas of the world. Christopher Columbus, when he uh, was sent by Queen, Is Queen Isabella to find better routes, trading routes to Asia, ended up, as you all know the story, uh, in Venezuela, uh, and they were wearing pearls. And as a matter of fact, um, the Queen Isabella gave him a list of five treasures she wanted him to bring back from her voyage. And pearls was the number one thing on the list above gold and spice and silk and all that. Wow. That's it goes so on and on. Yeah. Yes. And you know, well, maybe you, you, I don't know if you know, but a few, maybe it was probably in the nineties. There used to be this uh, really popular face cream that was made out of crushed pearls. And it used to be like a skincare thing. And it was really popular. I remember my mom buying it and it was supposed to be, you know, real pearls that were ground down and they were put in like this beauty cream and it was supposed to give you like this amazing glowy <laughs> skin. Yeah, they, and, ancient China. I mean, they've been doing that for thousands of years. Crushing yes. Pearls yes. Like and so it's, it's not new. Yeah. Yeah. So when you think about it, it's not just jewelry, but it's also, you know, beauty products. There's also a, um, um, cause when I used to live in Hawaii and you know, when you go to the little Asian stores, they have these little like pearl, um, 
drinks, like supplements and stuff you would take. And it's supposed to help give you, you know, all kinds of health benefits and stuff. So it's just so fascinating that it's not just jewelry. There's so much that uh, where pearls have been integrated into as it relates into just daily life, you know? I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, but you've but you may have heard um, of Mickey Moto. He's considered kind of like the grandfather of pearls, and everybody knows his name and associates him with yes <laughs> with pearls. He lived to I don't know what it was like ninety seven or hundred or something like that. But rumor has it that he would crush up a pearl and drink one every day with some milk. But I I don't oh. know. That's that's what I heard. It's kind of like Robert Mondavi supposedly drank a bottle of his own wine every day, and he lived to a hundred. So who knows? Maybe they're saying that for marketing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. My mom, my mom, you know, used the, the pearl cream for a few years. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? You know, I don't know if it actually did anything, but, you know, apparently. I should come out with some pearl cream. That's a great idea. Yeah. Because when you drill the pearls to make jewelry, you have all this dust left over. Make That's probably that. why they made it. I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, we've talked a little bit about the history. I do want to talk about your work as a designer and, mm -hmm. and integrating pearls into your work. And um, just I'm so fascinated just by jewelry design in general. But share with us your process when you're doing that, how you get ideas, how you get inspired, you know, that whole the whole the whole thing. I just want to hear how you how you do it. Well, um, I think with pearls, the sense kind of nature gives you something and then you work with it, you know, with, with gemstones, you have uh, people through the process, you'll have like a rough rock, right? And then somebody cuts a gem that shows off that gem the best. And it could be circular or, you know, um, emerald cuts or whatever. And then a designer works that into a design. Um, it, I, I like pearls because they you can't change them so whatever comes out of the mollusk you're going to work with and oh, um okay. to me a lot of the fun is taking pearls that are odd shaped you should see my desk i have pearls everywhere i have an example for everything you can imagine um so you know these guys for example are kind of teardrop shape and you really can't see it completely but at the top there's actually some circles around it as well mm -hmm. uh, but i happen to find two of them that kind of match which is really hard to do so this means i'm going to come up with probably earrings um when it comes to these baroque is what they call them shapes i i think those are the yes. most fun to design with because pearls are kind of like snowflakes not no two are ever exactly the same and i think it's cool to have like a baroque necklace for example because you're not going to come across anybody with the same pearls you will come across somebody with another tahitian necklace but not the same ones uh so they have personality uh, i think now I, I think every girl should have and every guy now should have like a round set of pearls but it's so few pearls actually come out round and we're all conditioned to think that because of mickey moto and because of you know audrey hepburn and Barbara Bush and, you know, Coco Chanel and all yes. that through the 1900s, yes. people think pearls, they think white and round, but that's such a tiny little part of the uh, pearl industry. So, so in my designs, I also try to use just different colors and different shapes. And of course, I'm going to make a white round necklace for anybody that wants one. I mean, but, uh, but as far as designer, I think it's fun working with the weird shapes. So then you get more inspired by the things that are kind of odd, kind of abstract. Things are not necessarily what we would consider aesthetically perfect. <laughs> hey, yeah, exactly. And, you know, part of what I am trying to do is to get the world wearing pearls and to get rid of the notion that it's for like, you know, a power woman or a wedding or uh, a super elegant event. Uh Pearls can be every day. And in order to do that, I think part of it is you have to introduce pearls that are casual uh, and interesting and, you know, don't come across as fancy or uptight. Yeah. And I've I've heard, too, that a lot of people think pearls are for more mature women. And so... Right. Yeah, no, we need you know, to they get, always think get their teenager grandma. wearing them. Yeah. Right, right. They think, oh, well, my grandma, you know, wore, wore pearls. Yeah, and so they yeah. don't think of it as something that, that you would wear, yeah, as a teenager, you know. So Everybody's grandma did, did wear pearls, yeah. But, <laughs> but, 
but they didn't have access to all these really exciting pearls. Uh, most of, so when you think of grandma, my grandma passed away, what, last year, maybe the year before. Uh, and so she was of a generation that grew up in the 1900s when pearls were um, considered those just small white strands and women wore them. Uh, and, you know, Chanel came out with them, I think, like maybe just at the end of Prohibition. So 1929, 1930 or whatnot. Uh, and it, it just became part of our culture that pearls were you know, feminine and, and round. And when you were growing up in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, that puts you into grandma category now, right? And uh, and, and so, sure, they all had pearls. And so that's why we think of, of pearls as being grandma stuff. And then the, we are all handed down pearls by grandma, of course. Even I got pearls from my grandma. Um, but it's changed because these freshwater pearls I was telling you about, where the Chinese take the mantle and put it in, you know, those haven't really been around, uh, you know, all that long. I mean, maybe 40 years or something that they've actually got, become interesting or 30 years. Um, even in Tahiti, the first pearl farm in Tahiti didn't start until 1968. So these sort of cool pearls, like those Baroques I was holding up with the Tahitians, you just couldn't get them as grandma. Does that make sense? So oh, now yeah. we're introducing them to the 20 year olds and the 30 year olds and whatnot. And people have to relearn Pearl and what Pearls are. Yeah. And uh, they also have to learn how to, like you said, how to style them, you know, how to uh, make them into an everyday piece instead of only the special occasion or only, you know, for a photo shoot or something like that. But I remember. Yeah, yeah, and one good thing to do that, um, I don't know if I have any within distance here, but just simply a pearl, kind of like I have um, one pearl on a chain, you know, does that. Or mm -hmm. uh, we've got bracelets that sell really well, which are just memory wire. They're little gold wire and it's just one pearl on, on your wrist. Um, so simplicity of metals, paper clip chains with, you know, a pearl on them uh, do really well. Uh, and I think that's the way that a lot of people are getting into, you know, pearl fashion without being fancy. All right. So what about like the colors and stuff? Because are, are pearls, can they be dyed? Yeah, they can. Uh, as a matter of fact, they really love dye because they're porous. If you take a look at them under a microscope, you're going to see all these pits and valleys. Uh, that's why they're scratchy oh, when you put okay, them on your teeth. Okay. So they love, love, love dye. Um, here's some, I didn't plan on this for some weird reason. I just have to have all these examples. Um, these are hard to tell, but these are like dark blue pearls. They'd never oh. come out of nature this way, but they're dyed. Uh, and so now I can actually create a, a look with a color. And in some cases we'll do this for weddings. I did a wedding where the bridesmaids wore eggplant dresses. So we did eggplant colored pearls, which you just can't get in nature. So I have no problem at all with dyed pearls. You just have to disclose them as a seller that they're dyed. Any sort of a treatment and jewelry you should disclose. Um, the one problem with it though, I learned this the hard way is that they really have to set uh, and they've got to be dyed by people who know what they're doing. So I got a call right when I started playing around with pearls as a hobby um, from um, Kate Flannery. She's on The Office, her boyfriend. And I happened to drink wine with him in like this wine group. And we just never really knew what each other was doing until one day, you know, we started talking pearls. Well, long story short, she was going to a red carpet event wearing a red dress. And he said, hey, do you have any red pearls? So I had some red, some pearls dyed, right? And I sent her this beautiful red strand and then I get a call from him during the event and it's like a hot summer night. And he's like, Matt, the color is like coming off on her neck. And so her neck was turning red. I never saw a photo of it. I wish I could have seen. Oh, no. Um, but yes, yeah, so I learned that the hard way. Um, but that's the only time that's ever happened. And I think the reason being is that they had recently been dyed. But uh, I've been selling dyed pearls for, for years. Um, they're oh, great. okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's probably... Yeah, I, I would think that would probably be like a worst nightmare scenario, you know, like, oh, no. You okay, know, very well. Man. But she's fun as can be, so that's all right. Oh, here's an example of uh, just one pearl on a gold chain, for example. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, Absolutely that's just beautiful. an easy look that you can get into without spending a lot of money. And now you're a pearl fashion person. Yeah.
All right. So tell us then, how do we, I mean, I know I feel like I'm all over the place, but as you talk, then ideas come to me and I'm like, okay, so how do we keep our pearls looking beautiful? Right. Because I remember, um, I think my mom had some, had some pearls and then I remember playing with them and I think they broke and she wasn't happy. <laughs> so, I mean, let's talk about like, you know, if you have pearl, you know, pearls in your collection, how do you take care of them? Should you restring them? Like all of those types of things that we think about. This video is great because it's like everything you want to know about pearls in a one video. Which yes. Is cool. You could break this up into like so many. Uh, I've been meaning to do a, per a, a YouTube video on just taking care of pearls. I haven't gotten around to it. Um, but two things there. So in general, um, there's a saying, which is kind of a fun saying, pearl should be the last thing you put on and the first thing you should take off. Mm -hmm. Right. So reason being is that since they're porous, as we talked about with the, with the um, dyes and whatnot, um, they'll suck up anything you stick on them or near them. So if you wear lotions or perfumes, it will dull them. Uh, it'll change oh, their color over okay. time. You know, so I try to be very careful. Uh, as a matter of fact, this pearl is such a nice pearl that um, when I go, say, on vacation and go to the pool, I take a cheaper one and put it on here, you know, and that way I'm not worried about lotion or whatnot. And this one, I, I keep near nothing. And if you're a girl and you wear hairspray, you know, maybe if you've already dressed, stick it in there and do your hairspray. But hairsprays hurt them, lotions hurt them. Uh, and as far as cleaning, never use any cleaning solutions. There's only one solution that's safe on pearls uh, and it's really great stuff. Uh, and I don't think we have it selling on our website, but we should soon, we just haven't gotten, we've been lazy not to put it up. Uh, and it's a foam that's good on pearls, but pearls and opals, because the also the only thing that's good on opals. Um, but you don't even need that. Just warm water, maybe like a drop or two of Dawn in a, in a cup of warm water and a soft toothbrush, then you're fine. Yeah, but keep them away from all the stuff, lotions and things, sunscreen. Okay. And then what about if someone is at a yard sale, a state sale, they see some pearls, the strand is broken. How how would you recommend if somebody wanted to repair it, restring it? Should they do that? Should they take it to a professional? What should Depends. They... I mean, you know, there's a YouTube video about everything, right? So you can learn how to string your own <laughs> pearls. If you've got time, go play with it in YouTube. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, and then otherwise, there's in every city, there's somebody that strings pearls. We string them all the time for uh, the jewelry stores in town and individuals and things like that. So wherever you live, there's probably somebody that can string pearls and um, they'll do it right. Uh, it does take uh, a lot of practice. When I first started stringing pearls, I messed up on so many of them. And the problem is, is that as you're doing it, if you get to the end and you mess up, you have to start from the beginning again. So you'll spend oh. like 45 minutes on a strand and at the very last pearl or two, do something wrong. Uh, and then you have to cut it with your scissors and start from the beginning. So it's uh, it can be frustrating, but once you do it, um, it's, it's easy. But yeah, YouTube, if you want to have a little fun on a weekend and, you know, string your own set of pearls, it's kind of fun. It, it's, it's really rewarding when you get it done. Yeah. Now let's talk about... Um... I guess the value of pearls as, you know, I guess trends and we talked a little bit about the popularity of it, but I was uh, doing some research not too long ago and it said like one of the most uh, popular types of jewelry is is pearl jewelry and it's it's increasing more and more and more each year. So from your experience and your knowledge, what do you think as it relates to the value and how that's going to impact future trends and maybe projections as it relates to pearls, the pearl industry, pearl jewelry? Yeah, the, uh, it is getting more popular. So one way to gauge that is you watch like these red carpet events, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, party at the Met um, last year and it was pearl themed. So everybody, well, it was Chanel themed, you know, which people wore pearls too um anyways you see it in, um, in fashion all over the place uh i just did an interview for a uh publication in the, U in the uk talking about pearls on the red carpet and you see everything from um you know the margo the the girl that played barbie you know wearing thick super expensive south sea chokers to kind of the cutting edge kind of you know edgy 
um, dark artists wearing pearl clothing and it's all over the map. And, and part of what we just talked about with the, uh, all the new shapes, uh, and the affordability means that there's pearl fashion can be anything it does. Like we said, it doesn't have to be just the, the fancy, you know, uh, choker. So there's so many choices. And I think that's part of the reason you're seeing more people wear them. Uh, but the big trend is men wearing pearls. And yes, so yes. I saw that in that. baseball last year too. Did you see that? Jock Peterson. Yeah. He was, uh, <laughs> on the Atlanta Braves at the time, uh, uh -huh. he's since changed teams, but he wore them during the World Series and they won the World Series. That necklace is in the World Series Hall of Fame right now, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? But uh, <laughs> it was just a simple strand of very inexpensive freshwater pearls. And you could buy them for, I mean, they're really inexpensive. Anybody can get them. But at the time, nobody knew what they were. And in Atlanta, Everybody went to the jewelry stores that weekend to ask if they could recreate the look, but nobody knew what they were. So uh, he was like a big trend center. But now you've got Harry Styles. I mean, you can't find Harry Styles not wearing pearls, right? And Mario Lopez and ASC Pay Rocky and um, Machine Gun Kelly. And uh, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and so men in pearls are, are, are a big, big thing now. And I think that's great because I've always worn a pearl. I honestly thought that men would be wearing black pearls, but these simple white inexpensive strands are what they're wearing mostly. And um, it's pretty cool. So if you're a guy, don't be afraid to wear pearls. Get out there. I go and I compliment everybody I see wearing pearls. And once you look for them, you see them everywhere, don't you? Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. So why do you think that, that there is like a, a huge interest in men starting to wear pearls? pearls now? Is it because you think it's just different or maybe more attention grabbing or what? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I'd i like to know, I, I'd like to think that it is this reason, but I know it's not. And that is that up until 100 years ago, men wore pearls anyways. I mean, the, this in the span of history, pearls haven't been feminine or only feminine, right? Kings and queens wore them. Like we talked about King Charles one, two, three. King Charles the first got one when he was a kid, wore it on his left ear into battle throughout his entire life. And when he was executed, he wore it to his own beheading. Uh, so men have always worn pearls. It's nothing new. It's just that we've been conditioned lately. Uh, do these people and these celebrities know that? I don't think so. <laughs> I'd love to teach him about it. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, it, it could be men in general, just liking the look. It could be, you know, one person sees one person wearing it and then they just recreate it because we tend to have that kind of following mentality. Um, it could be in some cases, men feeling that it kind of, uh, bridges a feminine connection, um, on top of their masculinity. I, I that's a good question. Yeah. But whatever it is, it's working and uh, people see it and then they're doing it too. Yeah, I think too. Uh, it was all. It was also a status symbol because I remember watching the old TV shows. Remember, like um, the Brady Bunch. You know, she had her pearls on, and and like Leave It to Beaver. You know, and and then Jackie O. You know, all of those women, or iconic women, or you know, whatever. It, pearls were always like kind of like the finishing final touch of the look, and they were always mentioned as, "Oh, darling, can you please help me." put on my strand of pearls. You know what I mean? So I think there was also kind of a status symbol too. Um, yeah, it always has been with pearls, right? Yeah. And so I think a lot of people, you know, cause not everybody can afford diamonds, but in some way, shape or form, you can, af you can afford at least one pearl. Right. <laughs> and, and it's it, and actually a lot of these red carpet looks that you see, they're not even real pearls. A lot of them are faux pearls. And so it's more in that case, it supports that it's the look in many cases, as much as it is buying and wearing an item that came from a mollusk. Uh, it's it's a look and people like the look, um, whether it's yeah. a faux pearl or not a, a real pearl. But yeah, status wise throughout history, and I, I think still today, um, yeah, they, they've been a status symbol and a sign of wealth. Um, but you can get that, you know, inexpensive strand that Jock Peterson wore for next to nothing and um one of our most popular sellers i don't have that one on my desk is 145 dollars, and it looks kind of like the one that he wore and men and women wear it equally and um 
I mean, for 145 bucks, wearing a strand of pearls is great. So oh, they're yeah. more approachable now. Yeah. Red carpet, though, it's weird because, you know, when you see that stuff go on, like when I saw Margot wear hers, I originally thought that they were fake because they were huge and they were so perfect and so perfectly matched that either they were fake or they were just some of the best pearls ever put together. Right. So I assume they're fake. And then I was sitting at a cocktail event just a few weeks ago talking to this woman about, um, you know, the whole pearl fashion trend. And we started talking about her necklace and she made the necklace. It was the wildest coincidence. And so she said, no, those weren't fake. Those were 15 millimeter South Sea pearls that were just like perfectly matched. So um, I imagine it was ridiculously expensive. She didn't buy it. It ended up being sold to a private collector in Florida later. Um, but it, it, sometimes it's hard to tell. So in that case, definitely a wealth symbol. Uh, but in other cases, you've got who was it? Cardi B wearing fake pearls, you know, to some event last year. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to pay more attention because I didn't know that because I didn't know it was. Um, I mean, I knew celebrities obviously wore pearls, but I didn't know more of like, like, you, like we talked about, you know, the younger, more popular generation celebrities are wearing them. So I'm going to have to pay better attention because I always oh, look yeah. at the jewelry. <laughs> it's interesting because it seems like it's more musicians than it is the movie people. So, you know, if after the oh, Grammys, yeah. you, you always count on like uh, people wearing pearls to the Grammys, but it's sometimes not as much to, um, you know, the Emmys, for example. Yeah. Well, I just like them because to me, they're, they're just like the epitome of class, right? Like, like it's hard to look bad <laughs> wearing, wearing pearls anywhere, anywhere, you know, they just instantly kind of, up level your look and and really up level your style you know i don't i don't see how how it never works pretty much with any outfit with any type of colors you know with any skin tone uh it's just beautiful and it's just so um it kind of has this energy and this vibe to it that really screams class yeah, and they're, they're romantic too and that they're it's the only gemstone that comes from a creature and i think that's one of the coolest things about them is that you know, these were created by a combination, uh, a culture pearl is man and nature working together in a way that creates a beautiful object. And to me, that's a story now that I'm wearing uh, as opposed to just something that looks nice. I love the story behind it. Um, it it's, it's such a great partnership between humans and nature, the culture pearl industry. All right. So I'm going to ask this and it may sound silly, but do the when you take the pearl out of the oyster <laughs> clam mollusk, does it die? Does it? You have to kill it to get the the pearl out. It's such a super good question, and the answer is it depends, and it depends on the varietal of mollusk. So in China, when we've got these big freshwater, they're huge um, mollusks. Uh, they can actually produce 30 pearls at a time. Uh, and you can take them out, stick them in again, take them out, stick them in again, over and over and over and over again. That's probably part of the reason why there's bajillions of, um, you know, freshwater pearls. Uh, in other parts of the world, you can only do it once. So in uh, Japan, for example, the little Okoya um, oyster, it, that guy's gone when you take the pearl out and you can't use them again. Uh, in French Polynesia, you can with these Tahitian oysters, sometimes, but what they'll do, and they have to do it really quick. And um, I've got some videos I got to post on this of, of these grafters is what they're called. They're very highly skilled people doing it, doing it quickly. You have to get them out of the water, take the pearl out, but it has to be an incision that's made in a particular way in a particular spot. Then if that oyster is healthy enough, you can put another bead in the same size as the pearl you just took out and put it back in the water and it'll create another pearl. And so sometimes is the answer with that particular varietal. So, so it all depends. It all depends. But keep in mind, too, for you guys that are wondering, um, oysters don't have a nervous system. Uh, they can't feel pain. So we're not hurting them or causing any sort of pain. They have no idea. All right. So that leads me to my next question. Are there boy oysters and girl oysters? And can both of them make pearls? <laughs> oh, gosh, you know. I would ask that of my scientist friend. Um, <laughs> that's an, you know, I don't know. I, I've never been asked that question. You know, they've got to, I would imagine it's an animal. I'd be, I'd be not 100% answering your question. I, that I, I'm going to look into that. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you have to let me know because now I'm, yeah. I'm curious. You know, I know if... exactly who to call Doug. <laughs> he knows everything about the science of oysters. He was, as a matter of fact, um, uh, discovered, well, maybe not discovered, but he, he taught me and, and, and the world really that the biggest myths about pearls are that a grain of sand forms a pearl. So you guys have all heard that. Yes, I've heard not that. Tr not true. So a per grain of sand does not call, is not irritant enough in order to cause a mollusk to create a pearl. And I remember seeing a, a, um, a video that Douglas did where he had a tank and he would take an oyster and just fill it with sand, right? And then videotape it and then time lapse it. And it literally poops all the sand out uh, and it just cannot create a pearl. So most of the time in nature, when we talk about natural pearls, you know, forming on their own, it's, it's an irritant, like maybe a crab shell or most often a parasite. So you get these little parasites that can dig their way into the mollusk and that parasite then becomes wedged and becomes the irritant. So if you x-ray uh, a lot of these pearls, you're going to see it's most often a parasite. Hmm. That's interesting. All yeah. right. So what is the, um, I don't know what it would be called, the gestation period of the irritant to where it becomes the full on. It's not really called a gestation period, but yeah, it just. What would it be called? The longer you leave the irritant in there, or let's say the bead, the culture bead, mm -hmm. of the more nacre is going to get created around it, right? Because it just oh, creates okay. nacre and get thicker nacre. It depends on which varietal when they harvest them, right? So harvesting could be as early as, say, 12 months, uh, but it could be 18 months, 24 months, mm, okay. uh, depending on, on where you are in the world um, and the different types of years. So uh, in Japan, for example... Um, they like to harvest them when the water is a little bit cooler. Um, it depends how old the mollusk is as well. So it's all over the map, really. But basically, if you take it out too soon, your bead, then you're going to have thin nacre, which means it's not going to be as shiny and pretty. And quite often, the really cheap pearls, uh, a lot of these freshwater pearls that you see in China that weren't in very long, you can actually literally look at it and see through to the bead. Oh, so a good okay. quality pearl uh, is measured by nacre thickness, having enough thick nacre around it uh, to where you cannot see the bead. And that's one way that people evaluate pearls is they can kind of hold them up to the light and you shine a light down and you kind of move it around and see if you can actually see the bead through the nacre. And if you can't, then you've got a better quality pearl. Wow. Okay. This is so fascinating. I feel like... Um... Like I'm in, in school or something. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. this is this is fantastic. All right. We so could go on forever. I mean, there's a million things to learn about pearls, but that, <laughs> that's what I love about it is that I don't I, I know that much about it. Um because you'll never learn it all. It's a fascinating industry. And I think this is so much more interesting. I love my diamonds, don't get me wrong, and sapphires and all that, but um, this is so interesting because nature comes into play and then all these other things that we've talked about uh, uh, that I love. I'm a learning geek and I'll be learning pearls forever and I still won't know it all. Yeah. So do do pearls are pearls like diamonds? Do they just last forever or do they degrade over time or? Well, I mean, I think, yeah, yes and no eventually it's a lot easier than a diamond to harm, right? Uh, they're mm -hmm. softer, you know, you've got your nacre can crack. Um, they're made of a portion of water, so they need to stay kind of moist. Um, you don't want to lock them in a airtight container. Uh, they'll get brittle. Uh, and of course we talked about people wearing them. And over time, the reality is, is that, you know, they're going to dole out and whatnot from, uh, from lotions and wear and that sort of stuff. So, so yeah, they're, they're, they're going to last, the, the chances of you finding a really old pearl that was worn hundreds of years ago uh, that's still in great shape, it's kind of tough. It'd have to be very well cared for. Uh, but the chances of finding a diamond from way back when, I mean, those things are tough to do anything with. I, mean, I, I sell diamonds all the time that are a few hundred years old. Easy. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So I guess before we wrap up, then what... Um... Can you share some tips or guidelines then for people who are looking to purchase pearls, people who want to invest and they're not looking for the cheap stuff, they want the good stuff. What are some you know, tips and, and things that they need to be aware of or what, what advice would you give for someone who's looking to make a purchase or to invest in pearls? 
careful with the word invest because you know to me jewelry i mean unless you're buying say um something famous like a, a queen's tr or something like okay. that you know investing in jewelry i'm scared of right it's like uh, art i used to be an art dealer and i used to tell people if you love the art and you can afford to buy it buy it but don't buy it as an investment so um but you would kind of mean just spending money on pearls if you want to buy nice stuff i guess yeah yeah and i have had people actually ask me you know because they want like heirloom pieces that could be handed down yeah, so yeah. you know stuff like that where they're nice not stuff. planning yeah don't, yeah like don't plan on reselling it i guess my caution is don't buy something thinking you're going to make money off it later <laughs> i actually just met with True. a couple yesterday that bought an emerald ring for eighty five hundred dollars about oh it must have been 30 something years ago and i'm i run a consignment jewelry business as well and so my job is to sell that for them now and i told them i can sell it for twelve thousand dollars and they were blown away that, uh, and then keep in mind, we keep a cut of that. And so uh, we keep 30% when we sell something consignment, they're going to end up with $8,400. So they're going to end up with $100 less than they paid for it like 30 years ago. And he was just dumbfounded because he figured, well, gosh, this, I thought this would be like a really great investment. Right. Um, so you got to, if you buy well, you can probably do pretty well investing, but um as far as buying heirloom pieces and things, yeah, if you, and pearls, it's one of those things. I guess the whole jewelry industry is like this. You buy from a source that you trust is mm -hmm. key in, across the jewelry world um, because they'll be telling you what type of pearls they are, you know, if they're good or bad, you know, the nake or thickness, the whatnot. If you buy from somebody that's just telling it like it is, that's helpful. I would also buy uh, these days of the internet. Um, I would buy from a company that allows you to return it. I know that sounds a little bit weird, uh, but that gives you, you the ability to get something and make sure it is as they described it, you know, without any risk, you know, being able to send it back. Uh, and then I'd make sure that if you look on the internet, oh my gosh, there's some people that are selling stuff like blue and pink pearls that are obviously dyed. Um, and there, there's even YouTube videos of people opening up these muscles. Have you seen these? And they bring out this five of these big blue pearls, uh, and they completely did not come from that oyster and they were dyed and put back in. Right. So somehow dis distinguishing the trust level of the sellers is a big deal. And when you see a description on pearls, make sure that the description tells you everything that you need to know. So instead of just saying pearl, make sure it tells you what kind of pearl, freshwater, saltwater, Akoya, South Seas, you know, Tahitian, and then make sure it tells you the size of the pearl and anything that may be wrong with pearl, like blemishes or things like that. And if you see a seller that's putting all that in their descriptions, then you know that person is going to give you the pearl that you're expecting to get. So basically then I'll just send everybody to you. <laughs> Well, we right. definitely do that. I'm not the only one. Uh, <laughs> and I love all, all all us good Pearl people, love each other and support each other. Uh, and so as a matter of fact, I've got a uh, call in a few days. I am the newest member of the board for the Culture Pearl Association of America. I'm the board of directors. And it's wow, a few of us. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, it, there are people that also sell pearls, but we get together and we work together to make sure that we're supporting the industry and that we're all doing these best practices. Yes. And I, you know, I just think that this is so fascinating. Like I said, I can't say that enough because there's just so much to learn. I mean, I could sit and talk with you for hours about this kind of stuff because it never gets boring, you know, and I feel like, oh, this, now I want to know this. Now I want to deep dive that. Now I need to research this, you know, so I'm hoping that, you know, our talk today is going to inspire and encourage other people to really kind of develop that same passion that that you you know share with all of us through your work yeah and i'll try my best uh to get youtube videos up because what happens is if people comment and if i see enough people comment say what is an edison pearl uh then i'll try to do a video about it and in that way i can kind of help people's question guide you know the learning uh but there's enough content out there that we could do just to help people keep learning so they feel more confident when they're buying these price is another thing that you've got to feel confident with too i mean how do you determine what a good price is for a pearl i mean it's a tough one right so right. in diamonds you've got like the cut clarity grade right uh and you can compare those and there is a efficient marketplace for wholesale diamonds 
Um, but in pearls, it's it's really it's a tough to start. Um, there's there can be an entire video about that, for example. Yeah, and I guess too, you got to figure out what your budget is, you know, and because a lot of people they buy jewelry. Well, at least this from from myself and talking to other people who buy jewelry and stuff, you buy like kind of your everyday jewelry and then you buy your special occasion jewelry. <laughs> and usually those two types don't overlap. But at least in the case of pearls, you could overlap them like we talked about yeah. earlier. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's one thing that it's I, I don't know. It's hard for me to understand, you know, being a male, I don't necessarily have that, but I have like a, a thousand rings. Um and I have my nicer rings and I have my casual, my silver and my diamonds. Maybe that's the same sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the, the great thing about pearls is that you can really cross wear them. So you can wear something with jeans to the grocery store, keep it on and put on a, a cocktail dress there later on and go out without. Taking yeah, jewelry. there's a lot of designs kind of like this one that would uh, fit that really well. The single pearl, for example. Yeah. See, now that I would consider that every day, like an everyday necklace. I would wear yep, that. Every day. You know, when you wear it, it, you know, for the evening out, it works just as fine. Yeah. 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 You could wear, you know, like you said, jeans and a T-shirt or a beautiful dress, you know, that you're going out for dinner or whatever. So yeah, when people asked me uh, that I was in a an article, the other day, it was Reader's Digest. And, and they said, um, what do you say when people say? well, I have no place to wear pearls and I get that all the time. So uh, when I was running a retail store and we sold pearls, people come in all the time and look at the pearls and they say, well, I don't have anywhere to wear pearls because in their mindset, they were thinking they've got to go to the wedding or they've got to go to the power lunch or, you know, whatever. Uh, so I, I always tell them where to the grocery store, uh, jeans and a t-shirt, grocery store, grocery store, grocery store, just wear it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the kids soccer yeah. game. And it mind thinking and I was like, <laughs> Oh, okay. I guess I could. Yeah. Because that's, that's the worst thing to have such beautiful pieces of jewelry and they're just sitting at home in the jewelry box, never seeing the light of day, you know, and I've been guilty of that too. You know, I have stuff that I just only wear for whatever reason, or sometimes you buy pieces that only match a certain outfit or a certain color or a certain occasion. So, yeah, we really need to, um, we need to wear our stuff. You know, we need to wear it, <laughs> show it off. I, I had this pearl in my safe for probably like six or seven years. It, it's hard to see, but it's an 18 millimeter Tahitian. So, which is really rare. In that case, they had to take that bead out, put it back into oyster multiple times uh, to get it to grow bigger. Uh, so they're really rare and like super expensive. And I bought it thinking I was going to sell it. But then I loved it so much that I never put it up for sale. And it sat for years and years and years and years, it, like wasting away, like you were just talking about uh, in my safe. So finally, best thing I've ever did is said, I'm gifting it to myself. So I took it out and said, I'm never going to sell it anyway. So I might as well wear it. So it's kind of my signature piece. Uh, so yeah, yes. enjoy your stuff. Get it out there. Wear it. I, I had one customer that um, this isn't about pearls, but when we had a store selling consignment items, I had this um, ruby necklace that was from uh, the 1800s. It was made by a company that made um, necklaces and jewelry for the queen. And this thing was incredibly regal, beautiful princess quality, like the fanciest thing you've ever seen. And I think it was like $35,000 or something. But guess what, guys? She bought it. And she was in a later stage cancer and she didn't have long to live. And she said, I don't go any, out anywhere, but I want to buy this anyways and just wear it around my house and enjoy having it on. Right. So guess what? She it went into remission. She's around now. <laughs> so thankfully, isn't that great? She wow. came in maybe like a year or two later. And I'm like, what? Uh, but, you That's know, amazing. she's going she's gonna to wear that princess quality piece around her house just to enjoy it you know you can too you don't have to go any, anywhere and show anybody you know enjoy it yourself yeah yeah it's so beautiful so um anything else matt that uh you want to share or talk about before before Gosh, i let I, you go i can't i could go on for hours so don't <laughs> ask me um no i I, I'd say if you guys are hooked uh, and got even more hooked on pearls watching this, just come on over to YouTube. Uh, just type in Matt Harris Pearls. Yes, You'll I'll make sure I put a channel. link. 
I'll, I yeah. will link all of Matt's uh, socials and his information in the show notes, as well as the description of this video. So that way, if you guys are watching this, you'll be able to click on over to his channel. He's got some really great videos. So I've learned a lot from them. Oh, one other thing too. There is a website called Pearl Guide. Now, if you go there, it's kind Pearl of a- Pearl Guide? Uh, Pearl Guide, yeah. Okay. If you go there, it's just people that love pearls talking about pearls and kind of like a social media-ish sort of environment, more of a bulletin oh. board, like the old school bulletin boards. Yeah. But the people that run it, uh, Douglas, who was telling you about, is their moderator. And there's a few other people in there too that are some of the best pearl experts on the planet. And they love getting on there and answering questions and just talking to people. So if you really want to get into it, uh, get into that community and you'll be surrounded by Pearl people. You can ask any dumb question you want uh, because everybody's there to learn with each other. Uh, so it's a really great group of people that just love Pearls. Wow. Okay. I will link that in the show notes as well. Cool. And um I guess that will be it, Matt. I want to thank you so much for spending, spending the time, time with you. With you. Yeah, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And you're so fascinating. And um, oh, and I guess we can kind of do a little tease that uh, you will be coming back. This isn't going to be the last time that we get to spend some quality time with Matt because he's going to talk to us all about um, his resale, reselling side of his business and what he does. So I can't wait for that. And that should happen probably in a couple of weeks. Cause I know you're going on vacation or something, right? Uh, yeah, kind of work vacation, but oh. the good thing about doing curls and work is that you get to travel to some pretty cool places. <laughs> yeah. I'm so envious. I'm so envious of that. Yeah. And <laughs> on this, on this next video, um, I was thinking about this uh, cause I think it'll be helpful. I'll share with you guys the mistakes I've made, because that is the one big thing you can learn oh. from in buying things that I should have bought, testing things I tested incorrectly. Uh, and because when you're doing resale, you can do great, but you can also make some very costly mistakes. I'll, I'll just share some successes too, but um, I've got this, I've learned the hard way, you know, buying and reselling jewelry. Uh, you're not the only one, my friend. <laughs> I think all of us who do this, either part-time, full-time, for fun, whatever the case may be, we have all... We all have a story to tell about <laughs> something we shouldn't have done. Yeah. I know I have. And um, in some ways, I'm still I'm still kind of, kind of paying for it. But hey, the lesson right. has been learned, right? <laughs> all right, Matt. Well, thank you again. I can't wait for uh, part two. And um, I'll see you soon. Right, bye, everybody.